Hey guys, Brady here, and I was gonna try to end the year with seeing uh, Ferdinand, and that was probably in Polly Father Figures, but it's December 31st, or no, it's December 30th, and um, so it looks like I'm not gonna see either of those movies, or Darkest Hour, or um, there's Darkest Hour, so I wanted to see Ferdinand. Um, father figures, and I think that was it. And if only Spielberg released the um the post this year in Florida, and not just New York and London, or not London, New York and uh L.A. I would see that. That would probably be in my top ten because Spielberg and I love his movies. But since that comes out in January for me, I guess Spielberg likes to release two movies a year with the post and Ready Player One coming out in twenty eighteen. So. So without further ado, let's just, for number 10, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I really like this movie. I thought it was a really fun movie. Uh, Dwayne Johnson was great. Uh, Jack Black was the best, was the highlight of the movie. Um, Kevin Hart was okay. He played himself, but what do you expect from Kevin Hart now? Um, number 9, Kong Skull Island. My friends hate this movie. I don't know why they hate this movie. I fucking love Kong Skull Island. Um, I, I love how cheesy it is. It's just so much fun to watch. Um, I love the, uh, the the scene when they first go to Skull Island. And how Kong is just like beating the shit out of their helicopters. I love that scene. I could watch that scene on YouTube like five times a day if I wanted to. It's great. And then the end fight scene with the skull, craw skull crawlers. I love that scene as well. Number eight, Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, I uh, I really like Spider-Man Homecoming. I like what they did with the character. I like how he's a uh, like he's a teenager now and not a fucking um, thirty-something-year-old playing a teenager. Um, I got this movie literally five days before it's released. Uh, there was this video store right by my college. That had copies of this movie the Wednesday before this movie came out. And uh, at the video store, it was nice enough to uh, give me a copy. It's a legit copy, too. Look. It's a legit copy. It just doesn't have the DVD, but it's a legit copy. Uh, I got it five days before the movie came out, or six days before, I mean. No, I got it Thursday. I got it the Thursday it came out. The Thursday before it came out, but yeah. Um, yeah, so happy that I got it before, before like a lot of other people did. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. Number seven is Detroit. Now we're getting into, uh, now we're not getting into the summer blockbusters. We're getting into the, uh, or I guess block, I shouldn't say summer blockbusters, but blockbuster movies. Detroit. Um, I really like this movie. Uh, I like uh, real gritty biopic movies or true story type movies. And Detroit was one of those movies. Uh, um, it captured the 1960s very well with, um, you know, how racist people could be and all that stuff. I, I really love Detroit and um, how corrupt the cops were. Um, and... Um, What's it called? William Poulter's character was a really fucked up guy. Like, his character was like a dick. <laughs> um, number six, The Disaster Artist. This movie, I, I, I love The Disaster Artist. Uh, I thought James Franco was really good as Tommy Wiseau. Uh, and I had a great with the movie. I wish they had the How Is Your Sex Life scene. I wish they recreated that scene in the movie, but whatever. Uh, Disaster Artist was still a really funny movie, and I thought um, Seth Rogen was probably the best part of that movie. He was great. Um, number five, uh, wow, Sony had a great year this year. They had uh, Spider-Man Homecoming was great, Baby Driver was great, uh, Jumanji was really good, Blade Runner 2049 was really good, and uh, All the Money in the World. I love All the Money in the World. Um, I thought Christopher Plummer was great in the movie. He gave an outstanding performance. Uh, I liked Mark Wahlberg's character. Michelle Williams was really good. 
Um, just an all-around really, really good movie. Um, I love the look of the movie. It, it has like that bluish, grayish palette, and I know some people don't like that, but I kind of enjoyed. I kind of enjoy movies with that kind of color palette to it, and whatever. Uh, number four, another Sony movie, Only the Brave. Sony was on a roll this year for me. The only misses for me were, um, oh yeah, and Life. Life was another good one. No, my only miss, the only misses for me was the Emoji movie and um, the Smurfs, Lost Village, and uh, the Dark Tower. Those were the only misses. They had like five, they had like at least seven great movies this year, which is, I don't know, I feel like they had a downfall the last three years and they finally had a, uh, they finally started getting back to making good movies this year. So thank you, Sony, for ma having one, two, three, four movies on my list. All right, so yeah, Only the Brave. I really like this movie. Um, I thought the story was interesting. I thought the characters were great. Um, just really good movie. I uh, can't wait to see it again. Number five. Yeah, the rest of these are just... The rest of these are just biopics. Well, majority of them are biopics after after this. Um, American Made. Uh, definitely a different uh, role for Tom Cruise. Different than, he, than he's been doing the last couple of years. When he's been doing like a lot of action movies. But this is like a true story movie. I mean there's an action scene or two in this movie. But it's not like, it's not like Mission Impossible or anything like that. Um... It's like an I guess this is this is more of like a crime comedy, like a dark comedy, I guess. No, it's not dark comedy. Well, it I don't know what it depends how you look at it. I love the American Made. I love Tom Cruise's character. Um, <clears throat> yeah, American Made. If you haven't seen American Made, see American Made. Um, number two, War for the Planet of the Apes. Great conclusion to the. Uh, Apes trilogy, uh, Rise was great, Dawn was great, War was great. We got a perfect trilogy. Can't wait to see what they do next with the series. And uh, number one is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Um, really great movie. Uh, I love the way it balanced comedy and drama seamlessly. Um, I thought what's his name Mark. Michael Mc, Mar, Magana, Donna, I don't know. Uh, I love Seven Psychopaths and Three Billboards Outside of Missouri. I was really excited to see what he was doing next, what he was gonna do next. And this movie, what was was worth was worth it. I loved it. I thought the movie, I thought the movie was hilarious. I I love the drama. I love the comedy in it. So yeah, that that's my list. That's my top ten most. That's my. Top ten favorite movies of twenty seventeen. What do you What do you guys thought? Do you guys agree with my list? Do you guys not? Um, post your comments in the below. Uh, and uh, I see you guys next time. I'll have my top ten worst movies of twenty seventeen uploaded sometime later on today or tomorrow.